and they're not set in stone. You should try to keep them at all times the same, but if you, in any, any point in the process, in any game development, that the goal is just utter nonsense, then go and change that. You don't need to have a goal that is telling you that it's going to be bad. And it's not to be mixed with requirements. These are two separate things. I'm not going to really go into requirements, that's more three hours. And code or certain date, if you're in software development, you probably know this already, but if you have the goals, if you have the vision, then you're, you're already like quite well into the, into the code. Even though this is like specifically for software development, then I like the code because it does give you this less uncertainty by doing goals and vision. But, it's your design. Now, th this is like a cycle, so if you, if you do scrum, then you know, it's a, a line, it's like a circle that goes back and back and back. Iterative, iterative again and again. So, it's the fun part. It's like where designers are like saying that it's going to be pink and blue and, and it's going to be for, you know, girls who like Hello Kitty and so forth. Maybe not me, but... So, the first thing you want to do is do a brainstorming session. And brainstorming is really good because it gives you a lot of ideas from a lot of different people that you might not otherwise get. It's a very it's like a 30 to 60 minutes event, event, a meeting, where you drag, you know, four to six people with different backgrounds into a room, and you enter with a question. And this comes from your vision and what you want the game about. And you want to enter and ask the people in that room a question, like, what is the reward for doing X, whatever that is. And you want this answer to be something you don't know this answer, so you ask them. And then you get a lot of post-its. And people start writing them down. So you want to have an answer to this question at the end of the brainstorm. And you as a designer moderate and it keeps people focused. So if people are just on a tangent and not talking or not really getting, just you know, try writing like a couple of post-its yourself and saying like, I want money from doing X or I want modules for doing X. And that will keep, that will get the other people to think, ah, I can do this. So they start writing. And this, this process gets people to think creatively and gets the juices flowing. So, you know, 30 to 60 minutes, 30 minutes minimum, because you, it takes a few, you know, 15 minutes just to get going. But once you get past the 60 minute line, it's, it's, it's not really going to get you any, anything more, at least nothing in value. Yeah. It's a lot of post-its. It's like my desk now currently, I think it has like a thousand post-its on it. It's from various brainstorming meetings and this is just a normal thing. So, uh, there are a couple of rules though in brainstorming and that the biggest one is there are no bad ideas. You have to accept everybody's ideas and there is no discussion about technical requirements of uh, that idea or if it's not fitting with anything or it doesn't work. Just let the creative juices flowing because you want this to just be a very organic and quick flow. So no bad ideas. And if people are arguing over the, the goodness of an idea, throw them out. Because you don't want to people be in there disrupting the flow because in that end of the 60 minutes you just spent 60 minutes arguing and you and exit this with a bad feeling of not accomplishing anything. And it hurts the following process which comes down. So, you want to have something like this. Okay. So, once you've done uh, brainstorming, you should have some list of post-its. You know, it's like a bunch of them. Depends on, of course, the question, the topic, and so forth. But you should have like five good, you know, amount of post-its. So, you sift through them, and you just read them all and talk about them and within the team. So you get like two or three people from the team and just discuss them. Is this good? Is this bad? Do we want to do this? And so forth. So a good way to do this is like get them into groups or you know themes and so forth. So you take these post-it and they're like around the same kind of area and just collect them together to see like if there's a pattern. I don't really tend to like it, I just like to write the things everything down and just like look at all of them and say like, good, bad, good, bad. I find it quicker, but you have to find it for yourself. 
So if there's anything in the in there, the K from you know the pairs of that's that's not fitting with anything. It just doesn't make any sense. Just throw it out because you know if you're making a first person shooter, you're not gonna like shooting Hello Kitty, and you throw that out because you're not gonna make a Hello Kitty shooter game, or you might. But if you're doing that, of course you keep that. Then this gives you you know. If, you, if this was a, a three-month process, then you would have had Hello Kitty in this process for three months. And here you just discard it and don't think about it ever again. So you're done with this idea and move on to the good things. So you're quickly getting all the good ones out of this, you know, hour, two-hour process. And in two hours you have loads of good things that actually add value to your product. And the good ones that you decide as a team, like, ah, this is exciting, let's do this. Put them aside and move them into the next step. Yes, so you should have a small list of ideas that are like work further. So out of this like 100 post-its, you should have like 10, 15, 20. I mean, it could be more, it could be less. I mean, it really depends on what the ideas come from. And you want to document these. And I refer to these as mini designs. Um, a design document is this huge document that's like 300 pages, as I said before. Can be, uh, but this you don't want to spend too much time on this because you want to explore the idea and see like is it is it adding value is it good and move forward with it. If it's not, talk that. So you write a short one two paragraphs like expanding on this idea, explaining like how it functions. Don't go into too much detail. Just very basic functionalities of how it works. It explains the mechanics and workings. And then you discuss this with the team, the other designers, and the stakeholders, and the various other people that you want to be involved in it. And you, as a team, decide, is this something we want to pursue or not? And this is like what, what we call as the review. And at this point, we just start deciding, is this adding value, yes or no? And there are three points that happens here. And I'm missing one of them there. But you either throw it away, say like, ah, this is, is not going to add anything there, throw it away. Uh, or you might say, aha, this is interesting, but I want more. So you, you iterate on that. So you bring it back to the beginning and do a brainstorming and a harvesting and then document it again. Or you might just say, this is awesome, let's do it, like this. And then you just give it to the programmers and they do it. It's like a pre-designed document. Iter Go back. You revisit on all these items that you've got out of the of the documentation part. You do more brainstorming, do more idea harvesting, and you continue until you have enough to start programming. And either you will end up with like you throw it away, or it moves forward, or you iterate. And, but if you stuck in this iteration process, then you might have a problem. You know, you might want to just go all the way back and say, let's just step like five steps back and rethink this from the beginning. And then it might just throw it away, but keep the question that you asked initially and do it all over again. And that's like the process itself. At the end, it just ships over to programming and they do it. It's awesome. But this is this prototypes is not really part of the process itself because prototypes uh, they don't work with all game mechanics. I mean, you, you can do very good like prototypes. Like with pen and paper on like, uh, like if you think about like a board game and stuff like that, it works in the same fashion. You want to do like move things around and add cards and stuff like that. But I'm not quite sure how you would prototype like a, a, a FPS, for example. I'm not quite sure. Like at least not with pen and paper. So if you're doing FPS, then you know it might not work in that way. But you might want to do like a using like Game Maker and so forth. So it's not necessary, but it's a really good tool and it really helps you to see like, is this actually fun to play with? Does it add value? Is it good? Is it fun? And you know, it's a lot of fun as well. I mean, the prototypes I've done with the people at CGP has been actually quite, quite a lot of fun sometimes. But it's not always. It helps with, if you're having a problem with like a certain game mechanic, then just do a prototype. I mean, just sit down and do it. It's easy. It's easy, there's a magnitude of programs out there, Game Maker and, and others. They're easy to use. I mean, you can also use Flash. If you know Flash, then that's a really good bonus. Basic, whatever. I mean, if you know how to do like some programming or X and A, for example, yes. I mean, 